and I ranked every single mini after the new update with the help of 10 pros. Thank you. So let's get started on the worst minis, the F tier, the minis that you should avoid. First we have the Dark Goblin, he is very easily killed by the Archer since he only has 5 HP and he is very overshadowed by the Spirit Goblin which can do a lot of damage for just for 2 elixir. And we also got the Healing Ranger which is again easily killed by the Archer since, he, since she also only has 5 HP and after the nerfs she just doesn't have a big impact anymore. Moving up to the S tier, these minis are weak but they still have their use cases, starting with the Royal Ghost, the newest mini. He just has too little HP and his only useful scenario is when he has the second star, but that is still a bit obscure. Next we got the Battle Healer, he's only useful in some monk decks and 4 elixir minis just aren't very meta right now. This is a good time to say that this tier list is not in order, so I'm not saying that the Battle Healer is better than the Royal Ghost or vice versa. Then we got the Swordsman, he just has too little HP. The buffs did help, but he's still overshadowed by the Barbarian. Next we got the Wizard and the Ice Wizard. Both of them are easily killed by the Archer since they only have 4 HP and they can feed Royal Champion Shield Bounces too because her super deals for damage. Next we got the E-Wiz, again he's easily killed by the Archer since he only has 6 HP and he's overshadowed by the Musketeer because she stuns even more and she's very tanky. Next we got the Fisherman, if his clash ability misses he's basically useless but even if he pulls at the Archer he will pull the Barbarian too because, because people just place Barbarians next to Archers and pulling Barbarian might not be the best idea. Next, the Magic Archer is used to be good versus the Archer Queen, but now Archer Queen is useless, so he doesn't really have much of a role in this meta. Next, the Valkyrie, she got nerfed, so she doesn't have as much value when upgraded now. So the Valkyrie really relied on that extra attack speed for basically all of her abilities. Now that that is gone, Valkyrie just is not in a good spot. And lastly, we got the Witch. Her skeletons just feed both abilities already before, but now they also feed Royal Champion Super Bounces, which is even worse because it makes the Royal Champion keep chaining her super and that just makes her so OP. Moving up to the B tier, these minis are decent and they can work in some decks, starting with the Mega Knight. He is useful but really only with his second star and Although it can affect a lot, that stun is amazing. But at 8 elixir is a lot and most of the time they are better options. Next, the mini Pekka. He is still good against the Shield Maiden and the Monk but they aren't extremely meta. They are still used sometimes, especially the Monk but they're not meta anymore so that means mini Pekka is not really meta anymore. Next. Both the Guard and the Knight are in the B tier uh, because they are solid 2 Elixir tanks and, and 2 Elixir minis are in the meta so next the Pekka, the Pekka is used sometimes but I feel like he's like overshadowed by the Golden Giant. Next the Musketeer, she has lots of HP and that means that she can tank Archer shots but she's just not used very often. And lastly we've got the Miner. The Miner is very good in combination with the Archer to take out long range minis such as the enemy Archer but he is easily countered. Next we've got the A tier, these minis are in a great spot and I would recommend using them. Starting with the Golden Giant, he is just a quintessential tank. His one star is good against a Royal Champion, his second star is good for a Barbarian King Dex and he's just an all round good tank along with the Skeleton Giant who is also on the A tier. I say he's a bit weaker than the Golden Giant but his bomb is still very impactful and especially useful against the Barbarian King and you can't really go wrong with him. Next the Lumberjack has a very useful versatile super and that can be used to boost Archer, Barbarian, Royal Champion and especially with his third star because that gives your minis a head start and that is very important as that can change interactions. Next we got the Prince, the buff really helped him to get back into the meta 
and now when he hits a mini, that could change an entire match. Spear Goblin just offers value the entire round because of his third star ability change. So if you upgrade Spear Goblin to all three stars, when he hits an enemy, he gets 100% boost, right? Because of his third star ability. And most of the time when he hits an enemy, it's gonna drain them to like so little HP. The Spirit Goblins takes them out very quickly because of his attack speed buff. And that activates his boast ability. Now he shoots out two damage spears in an attack speed of 1.2. That's just crazy. That means he's basically a Dark Goblin now. And that's the reason why he has been so used in the meta. And this is actually very controversial between the pros on whether it should be moved to the S tier. So that just shows how strong he is. Speaking of the S tier, these minis, they are the best minis. And you should definitely use most of the minis here, starting with the bowler. When the bowler clash ability hits, it can change an entire match because it just changes interactions because of the stun. And you can't really block his ability like you can with the spirit goblin by putting tanks in front. It's inevitable. And he's also pretty tanky, so he can tank archer shots, and that just makes him really, really useful. Next, the barbarian. His first star ability is just broken, especially when you use it with the spirit goblin and the archer. And that is basically the iconic trio of the season. And speaking of the archer, now we got the best mini in Clash Mini, the archer. What a big surprise. The three star archer just obliterates everything and she's like the must have mini of the season. Cause you really can't find any deck that does not have the archer. Cause you would just die without the archer. And before I go, props to O&M for doing amazing in season two. If you don't know, O&M is this esports organization I, and I am a content creator for O&M and they have been doing amazing in season two. Two of their clans have the most trophies in the world and they got so many people in top 100, top 50, top 25 and that needs some serious dedication because I mean I'm not pushing five hours a day. Uh, so that's pretty impressive. And I'm glad to be part of this achievement, kinda, somewhat, even though I'm an absolute noob. So... Do you agree with this tier list? Is there anything that you would change? Please let me know in the comments section below, and if this video hits 50 likes, I'll do another tier list, but for the heroes. If you want to see some crazy world records, this video right here.